While we often talk about decluttering here on Abundantly Minimal, let's mix it up today and talk about some organizational strategies that I use around my house. This video is done in collaboration with Mega March Motivation, a fun collaboration of many familiar faces from the Clutter Free January series, and you'll be able to see many different organized house tours this week. And the link to a playlist with all these different videos is below. That being said, I'll be sharing five different rooms of my house or areas of my home and walking you through some different organizational strategies I use to help keep my home organized and clutter free. So let's get started first with the entryway and coat closet. One of the helpful organizational tools we use is wall storage, which is helpful both out of the closet and inside the closet. If you find yourself being someone who often will just set things down wherever and then you have to put them away later, it's possible that moving some of those pieces of furniture that you're setting stuff on and instead choosing wall storage is going to help keep things much more clutter free. So with wall storage here, we'll often set our coats here or I'll set my purse um, or anything like that um, for just easy on the go access. And then I'm not setting things on the couch or on the coffee table. So it helps me stay organized. Inside the closet, we find it helpful to use some of this wall storage to store some of our cleaning tools, such as this duster here, as well as our reusable bags. So they aren't out and about looking junky like they used to be, and they're kind of tucked away here, but they're easily accessible to us. We just use command hooks and it just makes it super simple to set up and it's just something that we can easily maintain. When we have a set spot for these different items, we know exactly where to return them when we are done using them, and thus keeps us organized. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the coat closet for a few other strategies. First of all, I love repurposing other containers that maybe used to hold something that I decluttered into new, more useful purposes. So for instance, this container used to store different exercise equipment, and I decluttered some of that. Some of it I kept and I'm choosing to store it elsewhere. Now this container stores bird seed instead. So definitely much more useful. And I love when you're able to use something you already have for storage purposes. I also cannot recommend enough that every house have some sort of donation bin or some sort of container where they put things that are going to be going out of the house. Whether that's returns for errands, items you wanna sell, items to donate, really anything. And earlier in our decluttering journey, this bin was a lot bigger than this little crate right here. And we were filling it up much more regularly. By having a set place where these items go, you're able to prevent random clutter from popping up in different areas around the house. And I find that keeping it in the coat closet here is a pretty convenient place. And it currently doesn't really have much in it. I also will keep a few extra bags and things that can be used when you go to the donation center there. Um, so I've got a few bags there, but I highly recommend giving that a try. And it doesn't have to be your coat closet. Maybe you put some in various parts around your house based upon the types of items you're letting go of. It's totally flexible, but it's something that can definitely help keep things under control and help you make progress. Let's go check out the living room next. Now that we're over here in the living room, it's probably obvious that our home is under construction if you can see some of the paper taped down the floor. So it's not the ideal time to be filming this, but I just wanna give you a heads up that that's what it is. And because of that, uh, we do have a little bit more clutter on here than normal since all of these items are normally on our bookshelf, which we moved because of the renovations happening. By the way, if you're interested in seeing the before and after of our renovations, that video is coming very soon once the project is done. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. A couple helpful things here. On our bookshelf, normally, uh, we always keep this bowl out and this is a clutter trap. And when used strategically, these can be very helpful in preventing surface clutter. And this bowl specifically is where we keep a lot of our keys or phones, the essential items when we're not using them, so they're all in one central place. Uh, Jake is at work right now when I'm filming this, so all we have in here is our mail key, but this is a really great, easy option. He'll put his stuff um, when he comes back from work right into the bowl here, and it keeps the surface clutter free. Another random container we are repurposing. This was just a random plastic container. To be honest, I do not remember what this originally had, but this has become our mask storage where we just keep our extra masks as well as extra hand sanitizer. And 
you know, in a COVID world, it's just very convenient to have these all together. And we also can then keep track of, okay, which masks do we need to wash? And you know, when we have to take care of that. This is normally on our bookshelf, which again, has been moved for construction purposes. This storage cube though, has been immensely helpful for organizational purposes in two ways. There are four different caddies. The top two are for Jake and I to store whatever we're currently working on. And mine often does look a little junky, but it's strategic because by having a set spot for all the random things that I'm working on in this cube here, they do not sit out on our coffee table or our desk. If I didn't have a set spot to put them, if I was in the middle of a project, I would just leave them out. And ultimately having a destination for them means that they're still easily accessible to me if I'm gonna work at my desk or at the couch and the coffee table, but they don't have to sit out and be clutter when I'm not using them. So having some sort of spot for yourself to store things is really important. And then below we have some little baskets here. And I believe these baskets we purchased from Ikea a couple years ago. The genius part about the baskets is that they completely conceal what's inside. And one of them is completely full of lots of cords. So with the setup here, we've got our lights that are plugged into a power strip down here, as well as any of our media. Our TV is up on the wall here with cords running behind it, as well as the different DVD player, the internet router, the um, streaming device. All these things have different cords here, and it would look really junky if we didn't have this piece of furniture here or some other way to store that. So in this particular basket, it is a bit of a jumbled mess, but no one has to see it. So it's very convenient. And the only thing we'll actually pull out from here is just our phone charger hookup. So it's, it's here and ready to go when we need to, but otherwise we just leave that tucked away and you can't even tell. We are now in the kitchen. Again, please don't mind the construction stuff we have set up, but inside drawer storage, if you've ever used organizers that constantly slide around, it can be so annoying and definitely frustrating. But an amazing strategy to use is to simply put a little bit of sticky tack on the bottom of your drawer organizer. It will keep it locked in place. And I have done this not just in the kitchen before, but also in um, like a desk drawer as well. This especially helps if you're using lighter drawer organizers. So this is a bamboo one that's pretty heavy duty. So this one we don't actually have to secure separately, but if you've got anything smaller, especially something that's plastic, it will probably slide around each time you open the drawer. I'll put a little sphere of sticky tack on each of the four corners of the organizer, press it in place, and then it won't move around at all, which will just help your overall drawer organization so much. Another organization strategy I use when I'm in the kitchen specifically is taking existing extra storage space. And if you don't actually need it for whatever purpose it is, try to store something else there to open up space in another part of your home. So in this particular kitchen, we're incredibly lucky to have so much cabinet space more than we would ever need. And so because of that, I'm not the tallest person. I'm gonna take you above the fridge. And so because of that, this storage above the fridge is not really practical storage for me because I can reach it, but I gotta be up on my tiptoes and it's still a stretch. So we are currently storing items that don't really need to be used regularly. I'm not gonna open this one up just because I had taped it. So as you can see up here, I've got my travel bag up here that I've used for my different international trips. Those aren't happening anytime soon, so that's been up there for a while and probably will be for much longer, as well as some additional reference materials for my curriculum development business that are not short-term goals. Jake put an old chess set up here of his since we don't really play together. So it just whatever items that you don't really have a place for, if you've got extra built-in storage somewhere else, why not use it? Next, let's move on to the laundry room. All right, it's narrow quarters in here in the laundry room, but I wanted to show this is our behind the door wall storage. It was a simple project to install some very basic shelves. I think we got all the supplies at like a Home Depot or a Lowe's, and it was like just a short-term one-day project. Well, not a full day, but with that in mind, 
we got these little containers here that are just easy additional storage we wouldn't have otherwise and it would have just been kind of a wasted space when i open the door here you can see that they are completely concealed and again it was just going to be wasted space so we made the most of a small space this is a very tight room but we made the most of it by having this storage so in these bins we have some additional tissue boxes up here in this one we've got a few random home thing these are some sliders when you're moving furniture an extra uh, dr bronner soap bottle so just a few random things like that here's where we'll store our extra like reusable cleaning pads these go on our floor cleaner we just velcro them to the bottom this one would more so be the junk drawer version of it because we've got a few different odds and ends so we've got some extra um, rubber gloves here we've got a uh, radio in case of emergencies i've got some extra sewing kit items some drain snakes if you get a clogged drain so pretty random but again they are stored here just for convenience and they're out of the way so it's super easy to access and now we're ready for the last space the bedroom let's go now we are in the bedroom here and this is my dresser there's two different strategies i use here to help me stay organized the first thing is that i have a clutter trap set up on top of the dresser here it's just this little tray where i store the items that i choose to keep out on the dresser such as our essential oil diffuser some of the different essential oils some lotion some hair ties the basic stuff and by keeping it in that tray, it means that those items are all contained together. And then you can see the rest of the dresser besides the alarm clock is nice and clear. And that means it's just an overall more calming environment when all those items are tucked together. The other strategy with this dresser is using the extra storage in alternative ways. Now, when I first got this dresser secondhand from my grandparents, I needed all the space and it was stuffed with clothing but these days I don't have that much clothing so we've got a couple drawers open for extra space so one of the drawers we use to keep track of our important files and paper items so if we take a look down below here in this bottom drawer is where I keep different records this oops, this black file folder is where we keep certain important documents and files and car insurance records our teaching documentation so that's in one of these little easy to use file folders i also keep some tax oops, still too tall i also keep some tax paperwork in here as well i have a little file little binder here i'm repurposing um, many of these items i was a former teacher so i just repurposed different school supplies and just added some new labels on top but this particular binder is for our association for the condo that we live in and it's got different rules and policies and that sort of thing in here so just having these things all organized makes it very easy and just having more control over these important files is so important because we're ready to go no matter what we need it will be easy to find what we need and we don't have to sort through a chaotic mess of paper clutter so doing this has been immensely helpful for us but thank you for following me along today as i showed you some different organizational strategies i'm using around the house even during a construction process. So I appreciate that. Remember, the playlist is linked below to check out some other organized house tour videos as part of the Mega March Motivation Collaboration. And if you're new around here, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more videos from me, make sure you subscribe and check out some of these related topics. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.